There are several things that are critical for plant production and health. One of them is nutrition. What I have found with the Mitlighter system is what I've been looking for in all the other organic systems, whether it's square foot gardening, raised garden beds, growing in the soil, using compost, manure, mulch. In all those systems, even though we were spraying them with custom-made, expensive compost teas, feeding them expensive organic food, using seed weed, using fish fertilizer, doing all the things that a diligent organic gardener does, what we kept seeing, our plants looked great, but we didn't know what we were missing. This particular broccoli is grown with the Back to Eden method. It's been here for quite a while. As you can see, it needs to be harvested. It's way past its peak with all the flowers on there. But to give you a comparison between this one, that's been in the ground for over a month longer than what we have in the Midlander Garden. Here's, uh, I just pulled this out of my pocket, my lip balm that we make out of our beeswax and other things. But anyway, as a comparison, this is the biggest broccoli that we grew, and this mulch has been down for two years now. So there's an idea of the size of, of that head. This broccoli was planted, I believe it was a month and two weeks after the broccoli I just showed you. This was planted in a raised box, what we call a grow box in the Midland Gardening Method, and was filled with sawdust and sand. Absolutely no nutrient value in the sawdust and sand. The only thing we've done is water it and give it the Midlighter weekly feed, which is a natural mineral fertilizer. We feed these plants half an ounce of natural mineral fertilizer for every linear feet in the garden. I'm harvesting this head today, that's why I'm doing this video. This has had the same exposure to the sun and the wind and the weather as the previous broccoli that I just showed you. And this is the size difference. Huge difference in the size of the head. It's simply because of nutrition. We all know that if we fed our children Captain Crunch cereal and hot dogs all day, they wouldn't die. The body wants to live, but they would not be healthy and their growth would be stunted. That's what we're finding in a side-by-side -side comparison between different organic gardening methods when compared to the Midlander system that provides all of the nutrients that the plants need directly through the natural mineral fertilizer. Back over here to the Back to Eden organic no-till, no-dig gardening method which is certainly one of the easiest methods that we have and is great for water retention by using the tree mulch. We do another comparison with the the balm tin. This plant was planted about a month and two weeks before the next plant that you'll see in the Midlighter system. This is the largest cabbage in this bunch that were planted in the Back to Eden garden. There wasn't a lot of work involved. My wife did cheat. I saw her plant these and I say cheat in a kind way. The Back to Eden garden method you're supposed to put down compost and mulch and then that's it uh, according to the film. However she put quite a bit of extra organic fertilizer in the hole when she planted this cabbage. And that was in tree mulch that was two years old and had been decomposing and building up the soil. Let's see how that compares to the cabbage planted over a month later with the Midlighter gardening method. I do have to give the disclaimer that this cabbage plant here in the Midlighter garden does not get nearly as much sun as the one I just showed you. My wife has the south side of the house and that gets direct sun all day long. I'm on the east side and so this plant here probably gets three to four hours less sun a day than the one I just showed you. But as a comparison, here's the coin and there's the cabbage head. You can take a look at the leaf here and see the big difference in size, just the size of the leaves and I keep thin, thinning these leaves because we keep eating these leaves, but these leaves are just huge. Big, beautiful, healthy, bug resistant plants because of the, getting proper nutrition from the Midlighter Weekly Feed. This is one of my wife's raised garden beds. 
it has what I call designer soil in it. She's been working on this very expensive, very rich soil for the last seven years, and it is amazing. She started out with some uh, high-grade, expensive vegetable garden soil mix. Then to that, she added some three-quarter inch screened leaf mold compost. This is the uh, vegetable garden mix. You can see it has sand and other things in it, including leaf mold compost. So she had the soil, then she added the compost, then she added MicroLife organic fertilizer. Then, of course, uh, we're adding seaweed and fish emulsion and kelp. Of course, you can't have an organic garden without adding bone or, and blood meal, Epsom salts. To help the plants, she uses the molasses to make up compost tea and all these different other elements that she adds to this very high grade dirt to grow plants. And that's the whole purpose of doing all that is to feed the microbes in the soil because the microbes will eat what we put in the soil, they'll poop it out and that puts it, the nutrients in a format that the plants can access and then the plants get it. That works. It takes about three years to build the soil for that first one, two, and three years, you may have those proverbial $80 tomatoes. Whereas on the, in the mint ladder gardening method, it's completely different. Up to three months ago, I had no mint ladder gardening experience at all. What I just simply did is follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the, the books and the CDs that I purchased. And the soil mix here is simply 75% sawdust, 25% sand. That's it, no nutrients. It's just there to hold the plants in place, to, to hold enough water for the plants to have the water that they need to allow aeration and to hold the nutrients that we put in here with, with the Midlighter weekly feed. The results speak for themselves. Large, fast growing, healthy, highly productive plants using the nutrient packed Midlighter weekly feed. This is my wife's beautiful garden bed of beets. She loves beets and that's why she dedicated an entire bed. This bed is absolutely gorgeous and you would think that she's doing a great job, which she is. She's doing the best that she knows to do as an organic gardener. And if you look down here, you'll see the beets are growing. Now these beets were planted quite a bit earlier than the beets I have in my garden. However, the other day what I noticed is that she was really growing lots and lots of healthy green leaf. But the whole point of having the beets is to grow the plants. Here you can see down here, we can find the largest beets that we have and give you a comparison between the lip balm case here. So there's a beet there. Come on to the next plant. Yeah, actually it's pretty hard. There's really no shoulder at all. Basically, there's little to none beet there. These plants have been here for months now. Here's another plant here. You can kind of get the idea of the comparison between the size of the two. And here's another one. Or here's, a, here's another one here. Hopefully you can see that. And then these others here really haven't developed. So let's see how they compare to the beets growing over in the mint lighter system. Okay, so I'm over in the mint lighter garden, which we've been feeding these beets once a week with the weekly feed. And you can kind of see the difference here. It's quite dramatic. That's a huge beet compared to the beets over in the traditional organic garden. Let's do some more comparisons here, just to be fair. Here's another beet, and you can see the size difference, quite dramatic. Let's kind of move down the row here. Hopefully you can see these, that every one of these beets is substantially larger than the beets over my wife's garden, although they're good plants. You know, they look great, just really good looking plants here. 
So, just wanted to give you some food for thought. Whether you're planting using permaculture or whether you're doing traditional organic gardening with blood meal and bone meal and compost and manure, or whether you just really want to simplify your life, know that your plants are getting all the nutrients and nutrition that they need. You feed them once a week with a very small amount of natural mineral fertilizer and you want high yield, healthy, large producing fruits and vegetables. I'd encourage you to look more into the Midlighter Gardening Method. It's really made gardening very rewarding to me. I don't like putting in a lot of work and not getting a lot of return. I love the return I'm getting with my Midlighter Garden. There's a link below to get more information on learning about the Midlighter Gardening Method. If you're at all interested, please check out that link. We also have a Facebook page. There's a link down there for that too. My prime goal in making this video is to help you understand the importance of nutrition and the, the best way I found to ensuring that my plants get the nutrition that they need to be healthy and strong. What you do with this information and how you incorporate it in your existing gardening is certainly up to you. You don't need to change anything that you're doing. You don't need to take out your beds. You don't need to completely rebuild everything. But if you do add the Midlighter Weekly Feed to your existing gardening, you will see a dramatic difference. I was over at my brother's house. He has big, beautiful broccoli plants with no broccoli head. Somebody else was telling me they have big, beautiful plants too with no fruit. And it's simply a lack of nutrition. The side-by-side -side comparison is dramatic. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And if you think about why you garden, what your goal is in gardening, and if that happens to be high yield, nutritious, healthy plants, then please consider the Midlighter Weekly Feed.